do you do? What, what do you do when my obedience seems to always suppress me? What, it seems to always box me in. What, what do you do when my obedience always causes me to look crazy to the eye of the unbeliever? What, what do you do when I always uh, try to do the will of God, but yet to the believers I still seem crazy? What do you do when God has spoken something concerning your life, but what you see has not yet appeared to add up to what is in front of your eyes? What do you do? Tell your neighbor, you continue to believe God. You continue to believe God. Yeah, I don't, I don't care how large it is. I don't care how small it is. I don't care how much money it's going to take. I don't care how many people it's going to take to get it done. But you better believe God in this season. Because I'm telling you, God's going to open up the window of heaven. He's going to pour you out a blessing. We always think that's money. But the blessings can be resources. The blessing can be members. The blessing can be covenant partners. He's going to open the windows and he's going to pour it all out. But the question is, will you be ready to receive what he's promised unto you? And so... Someone may ask the question, am I doing good, Bishop? Am I doing good? All right, praise the Lord. Someone may ask the question, why should I continue to believe what God has spoken when it seems that it's draining the very life out of me? I'm trying to be obedient to God, but, you know, I'm, I'm praying the Bahoshia. I'm praying, I'm fasting, and I'm being faithful. I ain't even sitting like I used to. I done gave up the weed. I done gave up the cigarettes. I ain't cussing out folk no more. Every time I go on my job, somebody looking to be cussed out, but I just keep moving. Praise the Lord. I don't even cuss like I used to. I ain't fornicating. I ain't laying up. But it seems like it's harder to commit now than it was before. You ain't got to be saved. I know I'm preaching to somebody in here. Hallelujah. What, what happens when my obedience to God causes me to become fatigued and tired and vulnerable and weak? I'm always tired. and I, I done got eight, ten hours of sleep, but I'm tired. I, I wake up tired. I go throughout the day tired. And I go to bed tired. And I get back up tired. And this is the ongoing situation. What happens when I can't even recognize what God is doing in this season? What happens when I feel like I'm so far from God that I don't even recognize his voice? What, what happens when God places you in situations that people don't understand, but yet God told you to do it? <laughs> God have mercy. What happens when you begin to look like a fool and people think you're crazy because you say stuff that you see and everybody looking at you like, I don't see that. Uh, Lord, Lord, you're not crazy, okay? You, you, you're not crazy, Bishop. You ain't crazy. Hallelujah. You, you ain't crazy, man. Hallelujah. What happens when it becomes taxing to trust God? What do I mean by taxing? It's taking all of your income to pay your tithes, to sow when you're asked to sow, to donate this to the church, to donate. What happens when trusting God and obedience to God becomes taxing to the point that it strains on your finances and health? What happens when it drains my brain to the point that I can't even comprehend what God is saying to do, but yet I don't even see the results? What, what, what do you do? What, what do you do? Look at your neighbor one more time and say, you just keep on believing God. You just keep on believing God. Why, why, must, why should I continue to believe God? Well, because God is not a man. <laughs> That he should lie. I need about 10 people to take 10 seconds and praise right there. That, that's enough right there. You need to shout, my God is not a liar. 